All right, welcome back. It's just past 2.30 and our witness right now, um, I'd like to welcome um, David to uh, David uh, Martins to us. David is, um, I'm only going to refer to this in public once, David. You're half of the, you're the new Earhart by half. Um, and, you know, your predecessor obviously had a very long and storied history and spent quite a bit of time in this committee um, and has moved on, as we all do. Um, and you have now uh, taken over as director for the Vermont Affordable Housing Coalition, which is actually um, a, a, a growth pattern for VAHC because, because if I understand it correctly, um, you're, you've been hired to do some organizational work and to really make sure that the organization is um, sustainable. So I wanted to welcome you to this committee, to the General Housing and Military Affairs Committee. I imagine over the length of your time, you will be here often um, as affordable housing is us and one of our major issues. Uh, I'd like to start by uh, having the committee introduce themselves. And we'll start with the folks who are already online uh, with Representative Kalaki. Good afternoon, David. John Kalaki from South Burlington. Good afternoon, David. I am Mary Howard. I um, represent Rutland South District 5 3. Oh, David, I'm Chip Troiano. I represent. I live in Standard. I represent um, Caledonia Two District in the Northeast Kingdom. Welcome to the committee, David. I'm Tommy Waltz from Berry City. Nice to meet you, uh, Representative Matt Byron, Virgins. Hi, I'm Representative Lisa Hango, and I serve Richford, Berkshire, Franklin, and Highgate on the northern border. Good to see you again, David. Tiff Bloomley from uh, Burlington South End. Representative Joe Parsons from uh, Newberry, representing Newberry Tops and McRobin. John Palasic from Milton, Chitton, and Ted. Representative Barbara Murphy from Fairfax, Franklin, too. And Representative Tom Stevens, I represent Washington, Chittenden, which is Waterbury, Bolton, Huntington, and Buell's Gore. So welcome, we just wanted to have you in and, and tomorrow is Homelessness Awareness Day and there's gonna be a whole bunch of folks here as well, but we wanted to give you the opportunity um, before then to sort of, uh, again, to welcome you to the committee, introduce yourselves and, and tell us tell us where your, um, what your plans are. Mr. Chair, and it's nice to meet everybody. Um, as I said, I'm David Martin, and I though I think that I would just correct the math that I, I don't know that I'm half of their heart. I think that I'm about a quarter, and that <laughs> the the coalition and homelessness is another quarter, and the other half just can't be accounted for. Erhard <laughs> uh, hard was such a uh, just such a force, uh, of course, in this work, and so just as a just a very brief background. I'm actually also new to Vermont. Uh, I'm from Rhode Island originally. And uh, my background is in a lot of advocacy work, largely, uh, however, around substance abuse recovery and uh, LGBTQ uh, rights. And that's uh, further back in my, uh, in my nonprofit work. And I also have a history with the church. I, uh, when I graduated high school, I went to the seminary to study for the Catholic priesthood. And uh, I left in grad school and went on to later be the pastor of a uh, all-inclusive uh, faith community in Rhode Island at the same time as I was working in, in advocacy. So uh, set my sights on Vermont. I had crossed paths with Vermont in my, in my church travels and decided that this was what I wanted to make a home for myself. And I took this opportunity with AHC. So it's great to be up there. It's uh, great to, be, uh, to have found housing. <laughs> um, which was no easy task, as I'm sure you all know. I landed in Winooski, which is uh, not one of the places I heard and, uh, that's represented by anybody in this committee, but um, I'm right across the border, right across the line there from Burlington. So as was mentioned, uh, you know, Earhart was uh, just such a, 
such a force. And upon his departure, uh, VHC and uh, the Coalition and Homelessness both kind of said, well, what are we going to do now? And both organizations, the steering committees of both organizations kind of decided, well, we're going to take this as our next step uh, in, in the evolution of our organizations. And, and both groups uh, hired a director. And so with that, both coalitions also began the process of really kind of um, forming ourselves a little bit more clearly in terms of organizationally and what exactly do we do. And so I think that for VHC, our, our decided focus is that advocacy work is more than just being in the state house or being uh, in the state house digitally, as it were. Um, and that, you know, what do we do the rest of the year? And so our real focus has been around informing Vermonters about affordable housing, about how the process works, about needs, and also hearing from Vermonters from different perspectives, uh, both to expand our formal network and also to make sure that the voice of every Vermonter really is heard. So taking time to say, well, uh, you know, how does the housing crisis impact uh, people living with HIV and AIDS? How does the housing crisis impact uh, single moms, how, uh, the LGBTQ community, et cetera, et cetera, we could go on and on. And uh, so we started that work uh, during the summertime in the fall and hope to uh, continue that work through the legislative session and, uh, and after. Uh, we also have two American Vistas who uh, are both working on their project, uh, one in kind of community organizing and helping to empower folks to do some self-advocacy and teaching people how they can get involved in being a part of the solution. And our other VISTA uh, is sort of weighed down <laughs> by uh, communications work. So it, particularly right now, she's very busy with helping out with, the, uh, with tomorrow's event, uh, the Homelessness Awareness Day. So it's a busy place, and uh, we're looking forward to working together with you as uh, as we move forward. This is certainly not my first time in a state house, but it is my first time in a state house via the internet. <laughs> so uh, I, like you, am figuring out how exactly this works. So um, thanks. I'm very grateful for you taking the time to, uh, to talk with me today. I sent to the committee, and I think it's posted to your page, our legislative priorities for this year. And in large part, I were built based on what Earhart had done in the past. Um, I think it's a little bit more concise than maybe what you're used to seeing from uh, from VAHC. And we, it was done I, very collaboratively because uh, we really wanted to hear the voice and the input of our. 90 plus member organizations. And uh, so we tried to, on that first page, you see kind of our main priorities. And on the back, kind of a list of not, not housing issues per se, but issues that, that impact housing, issues that impact accessibility to affordable housing, uh, you know, closing the affordability gap and so on. So I just, I do just want to point out. Uh, as kind of our main, our main focus uh, this year, like last year, uh, and from my understanding, multiple years, the rental housing safety bill, which last year, as we all know, uh, was vetoed S79, but now it's this year there's S210. And so uh, that's a main focus for us, as is the, the just cause eviction legislation that started to be heard a bit this morning. Um, S101, which was the bill pertaining to water wastewater connections and the expansion of the tax credits to neighborhood development areas. Uh, we're also, that's another big focus for us. And then some main funding piece, pieces, of course, funding for VHCB, funding for the SASH program, uh, services in the, in the home. I'm sure you're all familiar with that program. And funding for the tax credit expansion to benefit the uh, manufactured home programs. Those are some of kind of our main focuses. And then uh, there's a significant housing bill being assembled, as I'm sure you know, in the Senate. We look forward to, uh, to following that and seeing how we can help with that. And we're also doing a lot of work uh, in the work group 
uh, that's addressing the recovery residences bill that has been, uh, uh, to my understanding, that's also been a few years uh, in the run. And uh, so I think that we provide a bit of a unique perspective on the bill that might help uh, bring together some of the pieces that uh, where there was disconnect before. So although this is kind of a first for the coalition to really kind of distinguish ourselves from the coalition and homelessness, we nonetheless are uh, continuing to work kind of in tandem because the two issues, although separate and distinct, without a doubt, uh, have a intricate relationship. And so uh, for that reason, we're sort of mutually uh, supporting one another uh, in both of our efforts. So that's kind of a snapshot of uh, what VHC is, is doing this year or trying to do. Uh, really been focusing um, on building awareness, raising awareness, education, educating Vermonters about the process, about um, affordable housing and uh, in a hope to, to bring more voices to the table. Um, thank you, David. It, in the time that you've been in Vermont, you've, you've, what you've been able to witness is something that has never happened before, which is the creation of units that um, are taking people primarily, hopefully primarily people who, are, who have been experiencing homelessness and take them from the motels, which was a half a step up from where they were before, or perhaps even more than a half a step up because they have a, they, they have their own facilities and, and showers and, and whatnot. Um, but now with the creation of, of units for formerly homeless households, have you been able to check out any of the new units that have been developed yet um, as affordable housing? In any of the communities, either in Chittenden County or in Central Vermont, or any place else that's 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 had these units completed, uh, I personally have not been to any of them. Uh, but of course, it's a frequent topic of discussion in our uh, in our coalition, in our monthly meetings. Thankfully, it's frequently in the good news story portion of our monthly meetings. So it's great to be able to to be here as that's happening. And. No, that's that's fair. I mean, it's there's a lot, and I really appreciate you taking on the 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 organization, you know. But at a time that's that is, uh, it's it's so hard to see, you know. There's so much money that's out there, um, so much opportunity, uh, and yet I feel like we're almost as worried as we were when we didn't have funding um, because we want to do it right. For sure. And I think that it's, a, you know, the, the kind of classic concern in this kind of work is always like that there is no money. And it's definitely a very unique situation that we're in where we have that money. Um, but still, as you know, I heard uh, Gus Seelig say at a, uh, at a meeting that despite all this money that, that we have, it's still only a down payment on, uh, on solving the problem because the problem is so, as you all know, the problem is so dynamic and so complicated and so layered um, that it's really going to take a lot of not just money, but creative thinking and, and working together, I really think is what's, is what's vital. Being able to, for the housing world to, to reach beyond its own borders, so to speak, and, uh, and chip, it's like chipping away at an iceberg. We had to chip away at it from, uh, from multiple angles. And I think you're right. You know, there's, there's all this, funding and what's going to be vital is the, is the moves that are made and what we do with it. So what is your, um, what do you think the next three months are going to look like for VAHC? Um, not just in terms of, of advocacy here in the building, but, but outside, um, but outside the building with, with all of the, affected you know, groups here. What do, what, do you, what do you envision happening over the next three or four months as we head into, as we head into spring? Well, a big part of our, um, as I mentioned, we're trying to sort of 
bring light to the affordable housing conversation from the perspective of different communities. And so uh, in February, we'll be uh, doing some work with uh, the BIPOC community to get uh, kind of that conversation around uh, how the housing crisis impacts that community in a particular way. Uh, we also are going to be doing some, uh, within the coalition, we recently established a DEI subcommittee. And so they're going to be very busy at work uh, helping, uh, the sort of a multi-layered thing. First of all, showing our own folks how to make sure we're always looking at issues through that lens, um, but also to, to try to reach out and connect more and more with communities who are doing that work or organizations that are doing that work more directly. Um, so that we could sort of help make sure that that, uh, that that element is present in all that we do. Another portion of our work is uh, we're trying to uh, solidify and mobilize uh, a young people's group so that uh, some college students and college age students, hopefully statewide, ultimately, um, that they'll be able to get involved in the process, hopefully ultimately in some advocacy work, but also just in bringing their voice to the conversation. Uh, I think that it's, you know, it's no secret that people in their 20s are impacted by the housing crisis in a particular way. And uh, so we wanna shed some light on that and bring, and bring that voice to the table. So we've already started with uh, bringing some college students together. And so uh, another big portion of our work uh, outside the state house will be uh, continuing to to build on to build that group to mobilize that group to um, to bring those voices uh, into the conversation. So those are kind of some two two major things that are uh, that are happening for us right now that we're very excited about. Great and um, acronym alert. It's early in the year. Um, DEI means diversity, equity, and inclusion. <laughs> Thanks. That word. There's so many. Um, any questions I, for David? When I started at uh, the coalition, I was given like a guide. Uh, it was a. I looked at the document. I thought it was just going to be a short word document, but it was actually quite lengthy of all the acronyms. <laughs> and uh, for my first very many meetings, I always made sure I had that file open on my computer screen <laughs> so that I could so that I could refer to them. And almost all of them had a V and an H in them. So it was kind of hard to, hard to keep them straight at first. Yeah, no, it's, uh, when, FEMA, when FEMA was here after Tropical Storm Irene, I found a, an acronym dictionary from FEMA. It was about 800 pages, you know, on a, you know, it was pretty incredible to think that you needed a dictionary for acronyms, but. Uh, from a governmental perspective, I suppose it makes perfect sense. We're also very excited about our work on the recovery residence bill um, because that that work is, as you all know, there's a real gap between sort of what, what happens to, uh, or a big point of contention on the bill is what happens to an individual who has to leave a recovery residence, where do they go? And, uh, and I was involved in a lot of uh, work in recovery residences in Rhode Island where the landscape is very different than it is here, uh, both figuratively and literally. And uh, through my work in the recovery community, I also had the opportunity to make connections across the country. And so kind of had a fairly good idea of what was going on in other places around recovery housing. And, uh, and really we just have this missing piece uh, here in Vermont that, uh, that could really bring the whole thing together. And so we're really excited to be a part of that conversation and that work that's happening uh, around really putting together a, a support system that's that's best for everyone and that uh, upholds and strengthens the recovery of both the person in question and the rest of that community and that also ensures ensures housing uh, but it really is sort of a the challenge surrounding that situation um, has its own its own particular struggles that are um, particular to Vermont. So we're excited to be, hopefully be a part of the solution and hopefully be kind of a, a helpful third voice uh, in the conversation. All right, anything else for David? We have to get ready to go to 
uh, at least switch our computer screens to be on the floor at the very least. Um, but thank you so much for your time, David. Nice to meet you um, in under these circumstances. Can't wait to see you again in 3D. Um, but we'll, and I'm sure we'll see you a little bit tomorrow. And uh, I fully expect to be able to see you for, you know, as we move forward with a lot of the different housing bills that are that are in play to this year. So thank you for your time. For sure. Thank you guys. And thank you for your, uh, your patience and your ability to, to roll with things <laughs> during these, during these crazy times. So thank you. Yeah, We're working on it. Thanks, David. Is there a chance you could share your acronym dictionary with us? <laughs> sure, I'll send it over. <laughs> yeah. All right, you. Thanks, all.